Hello, everybody, and welcome to Perspectives, the home edition. I'm Sam Jones, your host. And today we are going to have an, a really fine get together with Royal Ailes, our general manager, and uh, Senator Jim Inhofe. Here now is that interview. Thanks, Sam. I am joined now by someone everybody in this state knows. And if you don't, I don't know where you've been, but Senator Inhofe joins us today. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it very much. Oh, you bet. I've done this before, and I like your your format, and I like you. I, I've run into people that say, well, I saw, I saw you on this particular <laughs> program. Well, I like the fact that you watch RSU Public TV, yeah. and you've let me know that. Mm -hmm. You've come by before and talked to our students when you've yeah. come over. So that's right. I appreciate it very well, much. Well, see, that's actually where I was when um, I made that comment about uh, showing him where his office was the uh, day he was oh, the president, uh, the, right? That he took his office, yeah. You're one of the lions in the Senate, and I use that word affectionately because you really stand your ground fighting for this state. And I appreciate that as just as a, a guy who lives in, who grew up in Colcord, Oklahoma, in Delaware County, now lives here. I just, I love our state. I love, this is a fantastic place to you live. You won't believe this, but I actually gave a speech in Colcord at their, um, at their football field. Did you? Many, many years ago. I, I mean, a lot of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not careful, you can drive through Colcord and not know you drove you through it. You can do that. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about, about the time in the Senate for you. How have you, are you still enjoying it? Is it still what you thought it would be when you got to the Senate? If I didn't still enjoy doing what I'm doing, I wouldn't have run last time. I did, the last time I ran was just last year. Right. So uh, I actually have a six year term, and that's quite a while. And so I, I would have not any intentions of running again. But nonetheless, it is, there's something that uh, being in on this change in administration that's kind of rewarding because it opens up a different audience for me, and I take, uh, kind of take advantage of that. Now, you did not vote for the infrastructure bill that came out. No. Um, tell everybody why you didn't do that. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, if, uh, first of all, I chaired the Environment and Public Works Committee mm -hmm. for several years. Now, when I started chairing the military stuff, I, I, I couldn't continue to do that, because you can't do more than one committee. Um, but, but I, I did that for a, a long period of time. And uh, what we did, we had major uh, uh, infrastructure bills, high road and highway bills, and you know, that's one of the things that, uh, uh, well, in fact, I'll go ahead and jump into that because one of the reasons that I do the things that I do, that is infrastructure and military, is because if you read the Constitution, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And so uh, that's, when I, that's when I got uh, pretty active in that. So the last three of the bills that we had that were the highway bills or infrastructure bills, uh, uh, we did a great job. We did it, uh, it, it we just stayed on, on course of getting it done and not throwing in an agenda, knowing full well that when we get the new president we have right now, that he would get into areas that have nothing to do with infrastructure. In fact, he tried to get me to support that with the idea of if, if a conservative is gonna support it, he's gonna be able to get other people. I wouldn't do it because I knew he was gonna use that for his agenda and for a lot of things that have nothing to do with roads and highways. And uh, sure enough, that's what, what uh, happened. So uh, the true conservatives all voted against that. and. Um, I, I've, I've watched the things that are going on right now. It really bothers me because we're in the most threatened position, as an example, uh, in, in terms of uh, threats facing America that we've been in in my lifetime, where China is ahead of us mm -hmm. in terms of artillery, in terms of, uh, of, of, of almost every area, because they have an advantage. All they have to do is just pour money on it and it'll happen. You can't do that in the United States. Right. So we're, we're facing a real threat. We, we've got uh, uh, China, Russia, Iran, uh, and several countries who really wanna knock uh, us out. And uh, we are in that most uh, threatened position right now. Problem is nobody nobody appreciates nobody really understands it. So if you're going to do a threat assessment of being not, of having that as a reality from one to ten, where would we be right now? Ten being the worst, 
or and one being the, the least. Well, I think a better way to say that is, when uh, are, have we ever been in this great of a threat? And that answer is no, because we've always we've not have adversaries that actually have things that are better than we have, and uh, so uh, I'd say it, it'd have to be a ten. A ten. Mm -hmm. Well, you, I, I call you the king of the road because you brought so much money back to this state to build roads. And the, one of the big projects is I-44, as those of us who live in Tulsa know. Mm -hmm. So what other projects on the horizon are you looking at that you're trying to have influence to get money back to Oklahoma? Well, one of the things that uh, you might not think about because if you believe that it's almost all uh, just we're talking about military, but we have five military establishments in Oklahoma. Uh, we are the, and I'm going to explain what, a BRAC round, that's B-R-A-C, is Base Realignment and Closing Commission. That is, every once in a while, people will, uh, uh, groups in Washington will decide that we are not going to be doing things um, in, in the same way that we've uh, done them in the past. And, uh, and so we've had uh, problems with our uh, facing, not with our military installations, but with the five military installations we have, we are, we, a lot of them were doing all that well, except for community support. Now, why is it of all 50 states that we do a better job in Oklahoma with our five military establishments than others do? People say, well, it's political influence. It's not, it's community support. This happens every every one of our if if there's a problem over there with uh, Fort Sill with uh, with any of the places, uh, the the local communities get involved, and they don't do that everywhere, and uh, and so we have done we we've been through five BRAC rounds again base realignment closing phase we've been five of them since uh, 1987, our all five installations have prospered under all five of them. No other state can say that. Did you, you didn't go in to the Senate with that, uh, with that mindset that you're going to become a military supporter when you got there. You, you found that to be a really hot place for you to be no. because of what we have in Oklahoma. Well, I know that people would assume that, but that isn't quite true because uh, that put me in a position where I know what the threat is uh -huh. out there and I know what other people are doing. And I've got 20 kids and grandkids and I understand that, you know, we. Uh, <laughs> I want to have America along when, when they are enjoying the prosperity that they're supposed to be having right, right. now. Why did I choose to be on and end up chairing the committees having to do with infrastructure and the other committee having to do with military? It's because that's what the Constitution, read the Constitution, it says what we are supposed to be doing in, in our Congresses. And so I just, uh, I thought that's where I want to be. And... Uh, and unfortunately, and what I said, and I always hate to do this, but even some of our Republican members of, the, of Congress didn't, don't understand our Constitution, don't understand how serious we are about it. So that's why I got started in initially, and I've never regretted it. Now, the way it works in the Senate and in the House is uh, it's a seniority system. Talent means nothing. I mean, it, <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's a seniority system. If you've been there the longest, you can do that. Well, that's why I position myself to be in, in those positions. What do you think is going to happen over the you know, over the next couple of years with this president? What do you think is going to What do you think you're going to see take place over the next couple of years? Well, he has the lowest numbers. They get, seem to get worse about every uh, uh, every week or so, and uh, right now his favorables are. Uh, about about uh, almost 20 points behind now. Right. And this is, I've never seen this happen with any president of the United States. And I think a lot of it is people would know you can't, first of all, you can't spend the amount of money that he right. is spending. Uh, it, it can't be done. Now, it's the old argument that people are, are tired of hearing about it's not me that's going to pay this, it's going to be my 20 kids and grandkids. Well, there's truth to that. And, uh, and uh, consequently, we have all these things to, to they're talking about areas where the costs are so much greater than they've ever been before and so people now realize that and the, the reason I know that is because that's what people are now talking about that's why his numbers mm -hmm. are down he's not getting uh, those things uh, uh, it, 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 uh, you know we he talks about 
all the environmental issues. And when people stop and realize, right now there's a big meeting going on over there where everyone on the global warming stuff is there, and they didn't. What they don't realize is that they're 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 uh, worshiping China. China ha is has the greatest uh, uh, pollutants of any country mm -hmm. that's out there, and uh, we we are, and we're fully uh, uh, people are fully aware of that. And so I think what's happening is there's a wake up call to people who realize all of a sudden this is different than we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid to go into a hostile crowd, are you? To talk about what no, you... It's, it, in a way, it's kind of challenging because uh, you, you do things that you... Uh, people, if, if they're saying something that, uh, that the speaker knows is unpopular with them, they have a kind of a respect, even though they disagree with them. And I get quite a bit uh, of, of that. I'll, I'll never forget that one of the past elections you went through, you faced former Governor David Walters in the uh, general election. Mm -hmm. And I watched the That's debate. That's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, and I watched the debate. And I was so impressed. Um, both were civil to each other, but the facts. It's all about the facts. Mm -hmm. And you brought the facts out, and the facts are what won. Mm -hmm. And I was just, not, not a, a lot of people think it's swagger that gets you a job in the Senate or the House. It's mm -hmm. not. It's the facts. Mm -hmm. People listen to the facts. I'm amazed by how much people pay attention when you speak in those in those events when you when you attend them because you're bringing the facts out well uh, I had an occasion to talk to the Heritage Foundation not mm -hmm. long ago and that was one that they're reproducing and using to try to get them those very things that are people are not aware of uh, that are, I constitute as or I consider to be uh, threats to our country and uh, that's something I don't mind uh, talking about and uh, and uh, that's why the states are supposed to be doing these things as opposed to the federal government. What are you wanting to see happen this next year in Congress? Yeah, well, what I want to is, uh, see happen is a Republican majority in the next election. Now, the president will still be there. We'll still have Biden as the president of the United States. His term is not expiring until two years after the next election. But in the next election, I, I have little, in fact, I'll say it right here, and you can document this, and then when it happens, you can, uh, you can uh, talk about it, that we're going to, the Republicans will take over the, uh, the, the Congress, both the House and the Senate. And I think it's because people know there isn't that much money. They cannot get involved in all these causes that have nothing to, to do with, with really uh, any of the problems that we're facing. Well, thanks for your time coming by today. I appreciate it uh, to have a sitting senator to come by our TV station that's so well watched by our community out there in Northeast Oklahoma. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming by. I know you do, and I watch it too. <laughs> you know, people don't realize. They think, well, well he's in Washington. Uh, you, I, I dislike Washington in terms of, of I don't want to live there. And so my happiest days. Now, I do have to be overseas and right. wherever we have military establishments. But other than those times, uh, Monday is the worst day of the week, and Thursday night is the best day of the week. <laughs> I count the hours to how long it's going to be till we cast our last vote on Thursday. And, uh, and, and, but uh, I think one of the problems with America is we have too many people who prefer uh, Washington over <laughs> their home states. Well, thanks for being here. Thank You're you so very much. welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sam, we'll go back to you. And thank you, Royal. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more right after this.